Okay, in this video we're going to um, dig into a little bit more of some of the shorthands and, um, and things we, tricks and tips we use when we are drawing large structural formulae for, for large molecules out. So on this slide I have two separate molecules shown. They're, they're not related to each other particularly, I'm just using them as examples. So this one in the top left corner, this is um, glucose. And we've already looked at this one in a previous video a little bit, a blood sugar right here on the left. And then this uh, bigger looking weird thing down here, this is actually a molecule of cholesterol. This is the one that's in our diet, in our bloodstream. Um, humans can also synthesize it themselves. Um, and I'm going to use these as examples. So if we look at glucose first up in this top corner, We've already addressed what these um, solid lines are and how they're showing covalent bonds that are connecting all these atoms together where they're sharing pairs of electrons. And we talked a little bit about this um, OH where the, the covalent bond between the O and the H is present, it's just not being drawn out on this diagram. And similarly, this CH2OH, there's a bunch of covalent bonds that are happening there, connecting all that stuff together that we're not showing to make things look cleaner and nicer to look at. Um, so that's that's the first level of um, sort of shorthanding that people do or like simplifying to make these structures look easier to, to visually look at. Now this molecule down here, this structural formula of cholesterol, um, there's a, de a degree more of shorthanding that's going on here. <clears throat> so we can see that it looks like there are um, orange hexagons and pentagons that are kind of glued together and then there's like sticky things that are protruding out like antenna. It doesn't look a lot like a molecule. There's, it's not showing a lot of atoms uh, in here. Like where are the letters that tell you whether it's a carbon or an oxygen or hydrogen? They're missing, right? So yes, they're not being shown on the diagram, but they are there. Now, here are some of the conventions. Firstly, if there is a connection between lines coming together, so here, look, we've got three lines coming together, one coming down here, one coming down here, one coming up here, they're all connecting at this spot. This spot right here, there is a carbon atom right here. Anytime you have lines connecting, carbon, 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 carbon. So they're just not showing those carbons. They're there, but they're just skipping them. Put a few more in so any so now i put one over here right there's not i guess there's two lines coming together but anytime you have lines changing direction like an angle like that that's another spot where there's a carbon atom so we have a carbon here we have a carbon here carbon over here even up here on this like long long liney thing wherever there's two lines that come together at different angles there are carbons at those points too at the, at the at the bends. So there's a carbon here, there's a carbon here, and here, and here, and here, where this branch is off. So all those carbons are there, they're just not being shown. You're expected to know that those are carbons, and it'll only be carbons that'll be missed out. If there's another atom there, like it's an O, or an S, or an E, an oxygen, a sulfur, a nitrogen atom, those will be written in because they're sort of significant and interesting and different. <laughs> It's the reason we miss out all the carbons is that in these big um, organic molecules like cholesterol, like different kinds of proteins, like DNA, there are so many carbons. They're so common that we just kind of like assume that you know that all these are carbons and we're just not going to bother to put them in. All right. So that's the first thing. Um, the down here, there's something a little different going on down in this uh, bottom section right here. There's like two lines. What's happening here is that that's actually a double cov covalent bond between this carbon here and this carbon here. So it's like carbon, two bonds to another carbon. And then there's a single bond up here to another carbon and then it carries on. So you can have double bonds and they're also gonna miss the carbons out there, miss the during the season. Now, the, the, another thing is missing here. We, uh, I think we may have covered this already, that carbon, when it is making covalent bonds like this, 
it needs to make four bonds at a time, four covalent bonds to fill its outer valent shell of electrons and be stable. So carbon atoms, when they are participating in a molecule like this, they're all gonna be making four bonds with, and it can be four different atoms. It can be some of the same atoms, some different atoms. It can be some double bonds, but there has to be a total of four bonds coming out of every single carbon atom in this structure. So let's look at this carbon over here in the top right. All right, so we have a single carbon atom here, which will be at this, where the, where the lines bend. And according to this diagram, there's a line going there. So there's a bond coming up to that one and there's a line there joining it to that one. So this carbon, according to this diagram right now, is making only two bonds. And that is not accurate. Like it, the carbons will never make two. They'll always make four covalent bonds. So it seems like there's two missing bonds here that aren't being shown. And what we're saying here is that if there's a bond if there's a lack of bonds or seemingly missing, they're there, they're just being made from carbon to hydrogen, always hydrogen. So what's missing here is another line out to an H and another line out to an H like that, to a hydrogen atom. So this carbon is making four bonds. There's one, two, three, four, but we're only showing two of the bonds, which are the ones in the main skeleton out to the other two carbons. And then the other two that we're not showing are there and they're just connected to hydrogens. Another way of showing that would be that there would be a C here and two H's. You could write CH2 or you could write C and then draw the whole thing out, two H's, right? So let's look at another one. Uh, we can look at this one here. This carbon is making one bond here and one bond here. So it's making two according to the diagram. We know that's not correct. It's actually making four. So there must be another two H's sticking out here. Here's another carbon here. This one's making one, two, three. So it's only missing one. So that there's one there that we haven't got. Let's jump down to this one down here, this carbon right here. This carbon's making one bond there, one bond there, one bond there, and another bond there. So this one's making one, two, three, four. This one's good, he's got all his bonds shown. It's not a he or she, it's it. So it's got all its bonds there. So, and as you can see, if I draw in all the carbons and I start drawing in all the hydrogens, again, it's getting really, really, really busy and hard to look at and really figure out what's going on. And those carbon to hydrogen bonds are actually not that exciting in the realm of chemistry. They're not very reactive. There's not a lot going on with them. So that's why we kind of miss them out. And we just end up showing the sort of parts of the molecule that can do chemistry or interact in certain ways and, and make the molecule do things in a test tube or in your body. So that explains some of the shorthanding and why like this OH is shown because this has got an important role and it makes the molecule do certain chemical things. One last thing to look at up here at this like antenna piece. So there's a C here, a C here, a C here, a C here that we're not showing. And then once again, we can count up the bonds. There's this carbon's making one, two, we're well not making it showing, one, two, three. It's making four, so there's one missing. We need to put an H here. This carbon, the next one, is got one bond here, one bond here. And so it's got, we need another one, another one to make three and four, all right? So all the way along this um, zigzag line, it's actually a carbon, four, one, two, three, four, five carbons, and then there's hydrogen sticking off all of these carbons like this and like this. There's an H there, there's an H there, there's an H there, there's an H there, there's an H there. An H there, and this carbon's got one, two, three, so it needs one more H, four. All right, so this very like pared down skeleton version of the of the molecular structure is a lot quick and easier to draw 
doesn't um, have all that extra detail on it. It doesn't necessarily like show, I guess, as much. But if you understand the shorthand, you know that all the carbons are on all those intersections of the lines, and you know that any missing bond is actually going to an H, um, then it makes a lot more sense of what this is trying to show. And um, there really is no reason why these shapes are colored in orange. Um, it, just the artist who created this diagram chose to color them in, but really they could just be empty hexagons. It could just be uh, like a hexagon like this, excuse my bad drawings, and then another hexagon like this, and then another hexagon like this, and then your pentagon off here. It, they, they can be open squares. They don't have to be colored in. Um, it's just, they were probably trying to highlight something different on this diagram. So I hope that's helpful in learning how to decipher um, like these different types of structural formula. They're all showing the same thing. They're all trying to depict the same idea of how molecules are laid out and what's connected to what. There's just different levels of shorthand or simplification that we do depending on the need to know and also assuming that the viewer, you, um, understands these things that we've all agreed on when it comes to showing these diagrams. Hope that helps.